You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramapich and Mishizrael 57 76 2016. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Veschanan. And at the very beginning of the Parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu Moses describes to the Jewish people the supplication, the prayer that he put up towards the Rabbana Shalom, to the Master of the World, to Hashem, to God. And he asked God, Let's read this together. It's in chapter 3, verse 23. Veschanan el Hashem. I supplicated before God, but Isa, he at the time lay more, and said as follows, Hashem, God, you have begun to show your servant your great greatness, Hashem, God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness, your great mighty hand. Hashem, which God is there in the heavens and the earth? That is able to do like you do, and, and has that great might, has that great power. Then in verse 25, Moshe Rabbeinu says his request. Ebra na, let me pass over, let me go over there. Ve'era es ha'artz ha'toiva. Let me please be able to go and see the good land, to see the land of Israel. Asher be'ever ha'yardain, which is on the other side of the Jordan River. Ha'har ha'toiva zeh ba'levanon. The good mountain and the levanon, which Unkelish translates as being a reference to the Beis HaMikdash, to the temple. He wanted to go there, he wanted to build the Beis HaMikdash. And Moshe tells us that Hashem responded to him, God said to him, he was very angry, he got upset at him because of the Jewish people, God did not listen. God said to Moses, you have enough. You have a tremendous amount of zechuyos, you have a tremendous amount of merits. Don't speak to me about this anymore. Then in verse 27, which is the last verse we'll read at this point, Hashem says, I want you to go up onto the top of the mountain. Turn your eyes north, south, east, west. You'll see with your eyes. You can see Eretz Yisrael. You can see the land of Israel. You can be able to miraculously be able to see the entire land. But you're not going to be able to go over there. You're not going to pass over the Jordan River. Now as we read this, we need to understand the conversation. What is Moshe Rabbeinu's request? Why is it so important to him to go into the land of Israel? It seems like he wants to finish his task. He wants to bring the Jewish people to the promised land. But it seems from Chazal, from our sages, that that's not his request. That wasn't what was underlying his desire to go into the land of Israel. We'll see soon what was. But what was his, indeed, what was his request? What did he want? Also, what is Hashem's response? Hashem says, you may not go there. Don't ask me anymore. But I'm going to show you the land of Israel. You're going to be able to look at it, and you're going to be able to see the land of Israel. The question is, what is the significance or the depth of the idea of the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu is going to see Israel? If he has a request, he wants to go to Israel, how does it help him to see the land of Israel? So I'd like to share with you a Medrash and a Gemara and a Rabbeinu Bachai. If we put all these pieces together, we see a beautiful idea, which is related to what we spoke about last week. The Medrash tells us like this, Ba'esahi Lemor, Moshe Rabbeinu told the Jewish people that God that he, that he prayed to God at that time, and he said, What is this statement of, and he said? Rabbi Azariah says that whenever it says the word lemor, it's to say over. There's something that needs to be taught. There's something that needs to be repeated. And what needs to be repeated and taught here is that Moshe Rabbeinu, he was praying because he had something that he really wanted. There was a pain that he felt there was a, a lack that he felt he had, which was he was missing the opportunity to go into the land of Israel. And he was praying to God, please give me this opportunity. And we learn from this. There's something to be said over for generations. And that is that when we are faced with a difficulty, when we are faced with a challenge, when we feel we are lacking something, there is an obligation to pray. There's an obligation to pray. Sharei Moshe, Avbishnem Moses, even though it's, it was said to him already, that he's not going to pass over the Jordan River, he kept praying, he kept supplicating, he kept begging God, please let me go over the, to the land of Israel. As Chazal tell us, the word Veschanon, the gematria, the numerical value of that word is 515, because he, he prayed 515 times, asking God over and over and over again, please let me go into the land of Israel. So it's an amazing thing that we see from here that when we're in a difficult situation, when we are faced with some problem, there's an obligation to pray. We need to try our best to ask God over and over again that the problem that we're facing be removed. Now this point itself is very interesting because we don't see that Moshe Rabbeinu was answered. 
We just see that he prayed and he prayed and he wasn't given permission to go into the land of Israel. So we need to understand why Chazal are saying that we learn from here that if someone has a difficulty, a challenge, he should pray because we don't see that he was answered. So if we're learning it out from here, it sounds like we might not be answered. Second point in the Medrash, Tavar Acher. Another explanation, Mahu Lemor, what does it mean when it says Lemor, that he was to repeat this? Amar Rabbi Akiva, Amar Moshe, Rabbi Akiva says that Moshe said to Hashem, Rabbi the master of the world, Hashiveni Advorai, please answer me. Give me a response if I'm going to be allowed to enter into the land of Israel or not. I need an answer. Now what does this mean that he needs an answer? What was he looking for? So I'd like to read to you the Eitz Yosef who explains this. Hakavana lefi, the explanation is, the intent here is, She'ikr cheftze v'ritzon shal Moshe l'asvis ritzon izborach. What does Moses want? What is he going for? What is he looking for? He just wants to do the will of Hashem. V'mhu yizborach yomer loy, shal yudavar oid. If God will say to him that he doesn't want him to speak anymore, if he will just respond and say, that's enough, Moshe. Hare mekayim mitzvah sleisa say. When God says, don't speak anymore about this matter, so Moshe will now have a command, and then, by not continuing to request, he will fulfill a loisa say, a command, a, a prohibition. He will be fulfilling the word, the desire, the will of Hashem. Now, this is what Hashem responds to Moshe, and He says, You have a lot, you have so much. That there is so much good which is hidden for you, you have earned an amazing reward. Like Rashi explains in Chumash, but Meshesh Lecha Mitzvah Chadash, you have a new commandment. All of the Jewish people have 613 commandments. You have a new one, which is don't speak about this anymore. So that's Mitzvah number one. Loisa say, Shal Taisif Daber. The first point is that you have a negative commandment, don't continue to speak about this. Ukamai Kain, interestingly, also besides to the negative commandment, you also have something else. Mitzvah Saseh, Aleya Shapiska. You also have a positive commandment. Go up onto the top of the mountain. And there you're going to look over the land of Israel. So Moshe Rabbeinu, in this conversation, earned something. He got something. And now he got a positive and a negative commandment. And as a result of that, amazing thing, says the Eitz Yosef. That as a result of you asking... As a result of Moshe Rabbeinu saying, Hashem, I want a response. I need you to give me a response, even if it's a negative response, even if it's, don't speak to me anymore. Even if it's, you can't go into Israel, but you can look at the land of Israel. Because now, says Eitz Yosef, Moshe Rabbeinu has a negative commandment and a positive commandment, which, as a result of keeping those two commandments, Moshe Rabbeinu would now merit the reward of what he was looking for, as if he had gone into Israel and fulfilled the commandments, the will of Hashem, which he wished to fulfill in the land of Israel. And he, he ends off, Like the Gemara in Saita says on page 14a. I'd like to share with you that Gemara as well, because it's really beautiful, and it teaches us an amazing thing. The Gemara says, Darash Rabbi Simloi. Rabbi Simloi said the following idea, Why did Moshe have such a desire to enter into the land of Israel? When he wants to eat the delicious fruits of Israel, he wants to get satisfaction from the good of the land. This is what Moshe said. This, is, this was underlying his request. Many commandments were given to the Jewish people. The only place to fulfill those commandments is only in the land of Israel. Let me go into the land of Israel. So that I be able to fulfill them. So the foundation of the reason that Moshe so wanted to go into the land of Israel was because he wanted to fulfill God's will. He wanted to get those mitzvahs. He wanted to manifest godliness in the world as Hashem commanded in regards to the fruits of Eretz Israel. Did he just want to eat the fruit? Did he just want to enjoy the good? No, he wanted to do the mitzvahs. He wanted to fulfill the commandments that were connected to the land of Israel. The mitzvah of Shemitah, the mitzvahs of Miser, the tithes, the special ob obligations that are only possible in the land of Israel. So God said to him, What do you want? You want to have the reward. You want to have the fulfillment of my will. I consider it as if you 
have fulfilled these commandments. Even though you haven't actually gone to Eretz Yisrael, you haven't actually fulfilled those commandments, I consider it, the fact that you wanted it, I consider it as if you indeed did it. And let's come back for a moment to what the Eitz Yosef said, because he referenced this Gemara. It doesn't seem to be saying precisely what the Eitz Yosef said, but it, it definitely comes out beautifully according to what he said. Because the Eitz Yosef said that he was looking for a response from Hashem. He realized he's not going to be able to go into Israel, but at least let me have some opportunity to fulfill God's will so that I can be considered, I have done all that I can in, ser- in my service of Hashem, in my desire to serve Hashem as is appropriate. And so Hashem giving him a new mitzvah, don't talk to me anymore about that, lo say, prohibition, don't speak about it anymore. And by Hashem going and saying, here, take a positive commandment, I give you an obligation to go up on top of the mountain to look at the land of Israel, those two mitzvahs that he received are considered as if he's gone into Eretz Yisrael somehow, he's gone into the land of Israel and fulfilled God's will with the fruits of the land of Israel. And as we read this, we need to understand what is the message here? What is the idea that the Eitz Yosef is teaching us, that the Gemara is teaching us? What is it that Moshe wanted? How is it considered as if he's gone into Eretz Yisrael, if it's, as if he's gone there because he wanted to do it? I mean, it's a nice thing, he wanted to. But how does it work? And what is the idea also, very interestingly, that there's a positive and a negative commandment? What is the idea of this? the, the two aspects here the statement that don't do this and do this. What is the what are the two aspects? Now I'd like to share with you one more medrash from the Ravina Bachai, and I think the medrash really is eye-opening. It's beautiful, and it will help us understand something that's going on here. This piece is in the Ravina Bachai on the verse uh, verse twenty-five that refers Ha'aretz Hatayva. It refers to the good land, Ha'har Vatayv, the mountain, the good, etc. Amr be medrash. The Ravina Bachai brings a medrash. Mashal Lemelech. We have an analogy to a king. Shebikesh Lisa Isha. He wanted to marry a particular woman. Veshalach Shlucha Leraisa. He sent his messengers to go see her. Im Hinaa Im Lav. Whether she's beautiful or not. Halchu Rahosa. So these Shlucha and these agents went and they they saw her. Amrloi. They came back and they gave the report to the king. Ein Kurami Mena. They said, "There's nobody more ugly than this woman. She's she's just horrible. She, you can't look at her." Now the king, he had a particular servant of his, a friend of his, who heard what was going on, and he said to them, B'nai Mary, you people, you agents, you're liars. You are rebellious against the king. She's the most beautiful woman in the entire world. Why are you telling the king that, she, that he shouldn't marry her? Now the king decided he's going to marry her. Now the father of this girl so the, the agents of the king, they want to come to the wedding. The father of the girl says to the agents, Nishba, nishe, nichnas. He says, I swear, you can't come in here. You said negative things about my daughter to the king. Now this friend of the king, who had said nice things, he wanted to come in, Amarle, the father of, the, of this girl says, I don't want you to come in either. Amarle, Ashushvin, so the friend of the king says, I didn't even see her. I said to the king, that there's no one more beautiful than her. I said she's the most beautiful woman in the world. They said, it makes sense that you shouldn't let them in. They said she's the ugliest woman in the world. I want to be able to see her now so that I can see who's right. If, if they were right or I was right. You have to let me in. I'm allowed. I should be allowed to come into this wedding. Moses said the same thing to Hashem. He said, The spies said this negative thing about the land of Israel. They said it's a land which eats up its inhabitants, consumes them. I wasn't the one who had gone to the land of Israel, but nevertheless, I said the praises of the land of Israel to the Jewish people. Shanaimar, the verse says, The verse says, Moshe Rabbeinu says to the Jewish people, God is bringing you to an amazing land, a beautiful land. You should let me into Israel so that we can see, that I can see. Was I right or were they, were they right? Shanaimar, Ebrano, Ere, Es Arza Toiva. That's what he was saying. Let me go in so I can see this good land. I called it a good land and I hadn't even seen it. I want to go in and see it so I can see that I was right and they were wrong. 
Now, in this medrash, there's a very important question that we can ask, and that question will get us to the core of what's going on. The question is like this. Moshe Rabbeinu never saw Eretz Yisrael. He didn't see the land of Israel. How did he know that it was a beautiful land? What, what gave him that idea? How did he know? How could he contradict the Miraglim, the spies who actually saw the land of Israel, and they said it was a place which is not a good place? How did Moshe know? That's question number one. And really, it's the same question. In the, the Shushvin, the friend of the king, he spoke and he said, no, I know she's the most beautiful woman in the entire world. How did he know? He hadn't seen her. That's what he says. He hadn't seen her. So how is he able to know, to promise the king, that this was the right girl, that this was the most beautiful woman in the world? And I believe that the answer is, based back on that Gemara in Saita, on Daf Yudal, page 14, where the Gemara says, why did he want to go into Israel? What, he just wanted to enjoy the fruit? He wanted to get pleasure from the goodness of the land of Israel? The Gemara says, no, 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 no. Heaven forbid, that's not what he wanted. He wanted to be able to do the mitzvahs of Eretz Yisrael. He wanted to take the meister. He wanted to take the tithes from the fruit. He wanted to be able to have the spiritual benefits of being in the land of Israel. Now I want to say that the truth is that there are really two aspects. There's an outer aspect, just like we spoke about last week. There's an outer aspect and there's an inner aspect. The inner aspect is the spiritual accomplishments, the spiritual beauty that's there, the opportunity to do a mitzvah, to raise something up, to be able to use this in the service of God. Now it has a spiritual significance. The fruit is not just fruit. Now it's something which is infused with spirituality, with soul. But the fruit itself is an expression of that. When, when the Gemara says, Did he just want to eat of its fruits? Did he want to just enjoy the goodness of the land? It's not saying a contradiction. It's not saying that can't be what he wanted. It's saying that can't be all he wanted. Meaning, when something is infused with spirituality, when you see the soul of that thing, so now that thing takes on a brand new dimension. And that thing becomes not just a physical thing, but the, the physical thing itself reflects the spirituality which is ingrained within it. If the land of Israel is a place where I can take miser, where I can use the fruit in my service of God, even the fruit, if it's a place where I have a mitzvah shemitah just refraining from, from tilling the land during the seventh year, through that I become closer to God, that's an expression of the fact that the land itself, the fruit itself, is holy, is amazing, is beautiful. The fact that the, the fruits, the miraculous came back with fruits that were so beautiful and so large, why were they so big? Why were they so large? Why were they so luscious? Why is Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, so beautiful? It's a reflection of the fact that there's something spiritual going on. And in Israel, just as we saw last week, in the land of Israel, it's not a contradiction. The physical aspect, the amazing physical aspect of the land of Israel, is not a contradiction to spirituality. All the way around, Adir Abba, the land of Israel is a place where the spirituality manifests as beautiful things, as beautiful physical things. So coming back to the question of Moshe Rabbeinu, how did he know? How did the Shushvin know that she was beautiful? How did Moses know that the land of Israel was so amazing? And the answer is because he knew that if the spiritual aspect of Israel is so powerful, is so beautiful, has the opportunity to serve God in a way that you can't do anywhere else in the entire world, that must express itself, that must manifest in something physical that's beautiful. And so he was able to be sure that he could say to the Jewish people that the, the spies, they're lying, they're saying a falsehood. There's no more beautiful place in the entire world than the land of Israel. And that's because it's a manifestation of the amazing spiritual aspect, the amazing spiritual opportunities that are only there in the land of Israel. And in the analogy as well, the Shushan, the friend of the king, he knew that the king would never send his agents to anyone but the most beautiful woman in the world. The very fact that he was interested in this woman must have meant that she was beautiful. If they're saying that, they're, that this woman is ugly, that she's the most ugly woman in the world, they must be completely off their rocker. And that's how the Shushvin, the, the friend of the king, was able to say, no, she must be the most beautiful woman in the world. It can't be any other way. You, the king, would never be interested in a woman unless she was the most beautiful woman in the world. Now, coming back to the first points that we made, we said, what did Moshe Rabbeinu want? What was he looking for? And what did Hashem respond to him? What did Hashem give him? He let him see the land of Israel. And the answer here that we're seeing, as the pieces of this picture, the puzzle comes together, we're seeing that Moshe Rabbeinu, if he's looking at the outer aspect of the land of Israel, if he's able to see it, 
if he's able to see the beauty of the land of Israel, it means that at some level, he has been zuch, he has merited to touch, to access, to manifest whatever is the inner aspect, whatever is the spiritual aspect that he was so desiring. He was looking to fulfill the will of God. He was looking to manifest in the world whatever is able to be manifest only in the land of Israel. And Hashem said to him, I'm going to give you a chance to do something which is equal. In this case, what's equal for you is to stop asking for it. And that's the negative, the prohibition. And for you to go to the top of the mountain, you have a negative and a positive commandment. The negative commandment is the inner aspect of it. It's him listening to God's will, fulfilling God's will. The outer aspect of now go and see the land of Israel is that by fulfilling God's will of not asking anymore to go into the land of Israel, you have now, Moshe Rabbeinu, you have now fulfilled whatever it is you wanted to fulfill. The, the mitzvahs of Eretz Yisrael, as it were, it's considered as, as if you've done them. So now you have access to the positive command, which is the outer aspect, the manifestation of the beauty of the land of Israel, which you now have permission to look at. It's very interesting and very beautiful. But what comes out is one final point, which is, which is amazing. And that's connected to the, the first part of the Medrash, which we asked the following question. It said that we learn from here, the word says, the Torah says, lay more. That I prayed, I supplicated, I begged God, and this is what I said. Now whenever it says lay more, this is what I said, it's always, there's something that needs to be repeated. There's something that needs to be taught. We said, what is it teaching us? It's teaching us that whenever we face off with a difficult situation, we are to pray. We are to ask for our needs. We're supposed to ask God, please take away this difficulty. Please give me my needs. Moshe Rabbeinu, it doesn't seem like he was answered. So why are we learning from this place? And the answer is that he was answered. He was given exactly what he asked for, but not in exactly the way he thought. He thought that the way to fulfill God's will, to manifest that spirituality in the world, was only by going into the land of Israel. In his particular circumstance, he was able to fulfill that will of Hashem without going into the land of Israel, just by listening to God. Now, the, the amazing thing here is that when we pray, when we ask God for something, so we don't always see that God has answered our prayers. But what this message is telling us is that even when it seems that God has not answered our prayers, just like Moshe Rabbeinu, it seems like he didn't get his request, he didn't get to go into the land of Israel. But we're seeing something amazing, that Hafuch, the other way around, by this prayer, he got the fulfillment. It was as if he had done it. And not just it was as if he had done it, he was able to see the land of Israel, the outer manifestation, which means that he did it. He walked into Israel. He fulfilled the mitzvahs of the land of Israel. He fulfilled those commandments. So too, when we ask Hashem for something, when we ask God to take away a difficulty, or when we ask Him for a certain request, something that we want, more than anything, it can sometimes seem like we're not getting what we've asked for. And the message of this medrash is that we need to pray, and we need to keep praying, maybe sometimes even 515 times. But we need to pray, and we need to know that there's no such thing as a tefillah that's not answered, if it's really real, if it's really sincere. And sometimes the tefillah is answered in the opposite way. We ask for something and Hashem says no. And yet, what are we here for? What are we trying to do? Just like Moshe Rabbeinu, just like Moses, we're just here our, our goal should be to be here to do the will of Hashem. Whatever it is that Hashem's will is, that's what we'd like to make our will. Sometimes we think the way to serve Hashem is X. That's how we do it. And sometimes Hashem's response is no. You will be considered as if you've done it, but I want you to do Y. Sometimes it's something different than we thought. And that's also okay. And that's also true. And that's the lesson of Moshe Rabbeinu. That's the lesson that we learn here. That when we're in a time of difficulty and challenge, we need to pray. And then we need to believe and know that Hashem has answered us, that God is giving us what we need and what's truly the best for us. I want to bless you and please bless me. Hashem should help us to be able to try our best to serve Him, to do His will as we understand it. And also to be able to accept when things don't precisely go the way we'd like them to, even in our Vodas Hashem, even in our, in our service of God. May Hashem help us to realize, to be able to see, just like Moshe Rabbeinu saw the results, he was able to see the land of Israel. May Hashem help us to see that even when things don't go exactly the way we'd like to, 
May Hashem help us to see that the results, if we have the right intentions, Hashem should help us to have those right intentions to serve Him, and that the results will show that indeed our desire to serve Hashem ultimately is fulfilled. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.